today? It is Tuesday, April the 9th. And um, for all of you UConn uh, fans out there, congratulations on your, your victory last night. <clears throat> today we had kind of a quiet day really in markets um, in the economic calendar and then also in trading, although for most of the day, the market was was uh, was lower. You know, we, we were down, call it 200 points for most of the day. We sort of worked our way back up and then right <clears throat> about an hour before close, worked our way all the way back to fair value. In fact, the Dow only closed down nine points and the S&P and the NASDAQ both actually finished positive on the day. Um, <clears throat> so some some late day recovery. And I think part of it, it was tomorrow we've got more data out. We've got a CPI number that'll be out tomorrow that the market's waiting. And then we've, we've got earnings now that are kicking in for Q1. And so far, so good, although they've just started to come out. But um, I, I think the market sold off in, in some anticipation and then just sort of recovered through the end of the day. Again, quiet day in the economic calendar, so not a lot of data out. But um, uh, yields or bonds rallied a bit across the curve. We had yields come down. 10-year was down six basis points, closed at 436. So there you have it on the market recap. Um, I put a section in there talking about just because earnings season is now upon us, what, it, what the expectations are. Revenue growth is seen at about 3%. And then earnings per share EPS is looked at as, as, uh, as, as growing at 5%. So those are the estimates for the quarter. For the year, we're looking at about 243, 244 on the S&P as far as the earnings per share, um, which is a growth amount from previous year of about 10.5%. So earnings are expected to be good this year. And my comments were, you know, sometimes the bars get set at certain levels. Sometimes they get set high and they're hard to retain and sometimes too low and they're easier to beat and, and, um, and, and so on and so forth. And so things get priced around expectations, but then results can, can vary around that as well. And so if we're expecting 10.5% earnings growth for the, the year, um, I think the bar is pretty high. Okay, so, so my concern would just be that we wouldn't, um, you know, that, that we would, we would uh, fail to deliver there. But we'll, but we'll see here how Q1, what Q1 gives us. On uh, different sectors, technology, the bar is very high. Um, utilities, believe it or not, <clears throat> are expected to grow at 18%. So there's some standouts for the quarter in there and um and then energy and materials are both looked at as is you know basically having declining earnings per share and so th so those bars are very low and i say all that because i believe it's counterintuitive where my guess would be that the sectors that are uh that have low expectations would probably uh, outperform a little than the others which are going to be hard to attain um there was an a small business survey out today um that comes out um, it, and uh, was was below expectations. It's actually the 27th month of having it be, <clears throat> excuse me, below the whole historical norm, and so or the average at least. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd read into that a ton. You know, like I've said many times that these surveys, whether it's consumer sentiment or you know small business survey, um, they're they're worthy to read, and they and you should take note of them. But just keep in mind what it is. It's it's looking backwards. It's it's asking people, you know, how they feel, which is what they've just gone through. Not necessarily uh, what is likely to come in the future, since that is is kind of unknowable. But we get at least a glimpse. And it was the same culprits, you know, inflation, you know, interest rates, labor. Those were some of the the complaints, I guess, um, or the concerns, I should say, on the small business survey. But we're adding three hundred thousand jobs a month, and so. You know, if you look at the real numbers, um, things don't really look all that bad. We've got full employment, earnings are growing, all of those things. You've just got some small business angst, and uh, rightfully so. There's an election, there's geopolitical, you know, angst. There's higher interest rates, all those things um, at at play here. Um, the uh, the question and answer section that I added for Ask Brian was a pretty simple one. It was really just a different size of investor asking if he has enough money to own alternative and uh, alternative investments, if that's, if that was suitable. And so the answer is yes, we, we have a, a very broad array, a very diverse uh, makeup of our alternative investment portfolio. And so we're able to work with both qualified purchaser and also accredited. So there's different asset levels, whether it's 1 million or, or 5 million uh, in, in, uh, in asset level to make sure that we're building out the right amount of, or the appropriate, um, uh, an alternative investment portfolio based on goals 
And uh, but but in either solution, it's a very robust offering. And so absolutely, we can help people in that two to three million dollar range build out those portfolios. Um, that's what I have for you today. It, I'm leaving it a little short on the day because, frankly, it was a little quiet. And I think tomorrow we're going to have a lot more in the uh, in the calendar. We've got, uh, like I said, the CPI data. We're expecting 0.3 percent uh, um, for both headline and core for the month. And then we're expecting headline to tick up from 3.2 to 3.4 year over year. And we're expecting core to tick down year over year from 3.8 to 3.7. Um, if I were a betting man, I'd, I'd say we're going to disappoint tomorrow on, on those numbers just based on what I've seen. But uh, again, that's kind of a shot in the dark, frankly. doesn't matter. We'll see what the numbers are tomorrow. Um, and go from there. We also have some minutes out uh, from the Fed of their last meeting, and there might be a few, you know, nuggets in there that we can glean um, on on some rationale and logic that they're using. So with that, I'm going to let you go for the evening. I uh, wish you all a lovely evening, and I shall speak to you soon. Reach out with questions. Mm-hmm.